Construction. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's the Hardy Construction. You can find us at hardyconstruction.tumblr.com, youtube.com slash hardyconstruction, as well as facebook.com slash the Hardy Construction with your hosts, Comp and Shy. And we're here reviewing the film Peeping Tom. Peeping Tom is a 1960s, uh, blah, 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 from 1960. It's a uh, horror film from 1960, and it's directed by, if my IMDb page would come up, Michael Powell. By Michael Powell, a an English gentleman who decide, who almost got blackballed from the film industry. I think he was. Is it, a, of... is it eight-balled or blackballed? I don't know. Blacklisted? Blacklisted. You're saying blue-balled? I'm thinking eight-balled from cartoons. No, black that means just blackballed means like you get into a, a, a room full of sexualized black men and then they do stuff to you. You know, like you told me. All right, so it's <laughs> exactly. film is a young man murders women using the mo- using using a movie camera to film their dying expressions of terror. It's written by Leo Marx, came out in 1960, and it's been um, it's been highly touted by the likes of Martin Scorsese and that other guy who did The Godfather. So oh, Danny, uh, 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 Francis Ford Coppola. That's his name. His daughter made the uh, fantastic movie. Uh, Kaina Skotsky. Who is that? Her. Kaina Skotsky. Kaina Skotsky. No, she didn't make that. She made um, is that movie with with Peter Venkman in Japan. Oh, oh, uh, Lost in Translation. Yeah, that one. That snoozer. Uh, that and she made something else. I don't know. Some other movie. I think no, uh, Mary why, Eats why went she, in. Skotsky. She didn't do Kaina Skotsky. Kaina no, Skotsky. She, she didn't. She didn't. Yeah, Kaina Skotsky was like some art house movie, right? Well, I mean, those are all art house movies. But well, she, no, it's like, it's awesome, actually. It's all like... Oh, I can imagine. It, that and Baraka, right? Uh, Baraka? i never seen that. So, uh, oh, and that's like the Cree Master cycle? Those kind of movies? Where it's just it's, uh, no, it's like all like footage of... Just like life, and it's really yeah, depressing. Yeah, same thing actually. as the, uh, Baraka and the Cream Master cycle. Hey, everybody, welcome to the RD Construction. It's for art <laughs> fades. Anyway, uh, so this film, what did you think about it initially? I really liked it. It's a pretty good movie, right? I mean, it's uh, yeah. this is us. <laughs> this is this is us classing up the shithole podcast. Yeah, yeah. It's, I remember hearing about it a long time ago. I kept hearing about it over and over when there's like all the greatest horror movies of all time. I wouldn't say it's one of the greatest horror movies of all time. I think it's a at very, that point it was for what it, for the time. Right. I think it's a very important film that came out, and um, I think it's very it's it's um I wouldn't say it's on the level of Psycho because I think Psycho is a completely different monster than this. Although visually, this movie's a lot cooler I think well with color it is black and white you know Psycho I think still has a pretty fucking amazing look to it when was Psycho made oh it was made like a year before or something yeah and that one that's the one with Vince Vaughn and no, I'm just kidding that was a piece of shit that remake um, <laughs> so Peeping Tom this young man is this gentleman um, Mark Lewis who has uh, an obvious German accent, even though he's raised in the UK and his parents are English, so I don't know why they don't uh, explain that part. Yeah. So it's like, well, he's going around at the first... The first Actually, movie. Peeping Tom came out a month before. Oh, that Alfred Cock Hitch. That motherfucking... That stealer. asshole. That stealing cocksucker. He's a mean one. Wait, so... Hitch cock. What? Wait, so why is Peeping Tom in color and Psycho is in black and white if they came out like... Unless I saw a restored version? Maybe, I don't know. I have no idea about these things. Lion sack of shit. Anyway, so Mark Lewis is this, um, what, what does he have? What's wrong with him? <laughs> He's got something wrong Asperger's with him. Asperger's again? Is it, He's a peeping Tom. He's a peeping Tom. The voyeur. Yeah, so the film starts out with a, a lone woman standing in like a street in England. I keep forgetting it was in England. I kept thinking it was in the United States for some reason, even though... You can't forget it when you're talking to that. Wait, pump, but where uh, where did this film take place Ellen? at? Do you remember? It took it's place in, in L.A., right? I don't know. I don't know whether this you, is. Do you think I listen? I don't know. No, I actually don't. I don't know. I don't I, know if it says. I think most of the people had. I mean, it is a movie filming, so prop. But she's the neighbors are all British. It's probably in England somewhere. Right, but yeah, I guess so. Because some of the characters speak with American accents, right? Or am I just? I didn't hear any American accents. Really? Maybe, I must have just replaced Maybe the director it. did. Maybe it's an American director shooting in England. Could be, I guess. So anyway, Mark Lewis... Um, well, anyway, we start out with this woman who's like a streetwalker. 
<laughs> I guess streetwalker. That sounds like somebody who fights in the '80s in a gang and shit. <laughs> she's a prostitute, and there's a there's a, she's, um, a she's a hua. She's making ends meet by meeting ends. <laughs> so she, you see this uh, woman standing there, then you see like the POV of a camera, even though <laughs> it totally doesn't line up to how the the camera would be if it was POV, because the guy has a camera, like, let's say shoulder length. Yeah. And it's one of those old... I, I wish I knew the type of camera he had. That's, that shows how unprepared I am. It's one of those old school... Eight, not 8 millimeters, 16 millimeters of those? One of those bad boys? I don't know shit about cameras, so... I should, but I guess I don't. But he has one of those old school cameras from the 60s. There you go, we just covered our bases. And yeah. he, he hides it um, <laughs> under his shoulder as much as you can hide something that's about the size of a, of a, one of those things that you go to see, you know, if you're on the top of the... Like, a skyscraper in New York, you know. Those yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's like, like the size it of looks that. like one of those things, like one of those viewfinders. And um, it's funny because it's lining up like it's POV, like a person, although it's basically under his armpit. And this camera, you don't see anybody. You just see the camera in these four blocks because it's supposedly the vision of the camera itself. And it's slowly working in onto this woman, and she's like, "Oh, four pounds or whatever," which I thought she meant four pounds in her ass, like you know, just give her four pounds a dick. Um, but it was yeah. It is in England, four pounds. So, what's funny? Yeah, because she had an English accent too. What's funny is that <laughs> when when you see the POV of the killer, like you clearly see the sh- two shadows of a, like two people holding a giant camera. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was hilarious. So anyway, the camera goes upstairs, uh, following this woman. A woman passes by the POV of the camera. Right then, I don't know why the peeping tom didn't shit his pants because you know I mean, somebody clearly just saw him, unless they just. He doesn't seem to care uh, later on. He really is a weird guy. So anyway, the cameras... Oh, this is all POV, so I guess a lot of films take from this with the POV kind of thing. The killer doing the POV action. Although not really, but like for a horror film it does. Camera goes up. um, Pretty interesting thing happens where the woman is taking her clothes off. And she... You see a giant... You see the hand move into frame and remove something off the camera. And there's a glaring light on the woman, and she gets all paranoid, and she starts screaming, and then the camera rushes into her, and she dies, and then the film starts with the opening credits. And the opening credits look like an episode of a 1960s TV show. It's really old. It's Very crazy. much so. Like, and then, like... The opening credits like almost throw you off. off. What? what? The opening credits almost throw you off. Like, you're like, what the fuck is this? But go ahead. The way people, like, talk and everything, and, like, the, the things that freak them out are so tame... Yeah, it's almost like an episode of Bewitched, but people get killed, like, being perverts and stuff. Yeah, like, the the woman, that Helen, like, she's, like, so scared of, like, a lizard being thrown on his bed or something, like, as if they've never seen something like that. Like, it really is, like, a different world. It's crazy. Yeah, it definitely is. And the 60s is a totally different time, I guess. Uh, it wasn't a, the point of revolution just yet, right? That would be more like no, the, 19- that would be like the late 60s, like, 67 through 68 and all that nine. Um, but it's an interesting film. We're, we're shown then. Do you think he was jerking off when they show when he started? He the film's in color. Well, the version that I saw. I don't know if the film was on black and white. I assume well, it was. If to it was be own. jerking off, how could he also hold a camera and kill someone? No, no, no. When he's watching the film at home, because oh, it, show, it shows him stand up. Like it shows he projects the film on his wall, and you see him like like watching, watching, watching. Like behind him, you see this woman's face, the prostitute he just killed. Then he stands up, and then it cuts to the woman's face screaming, and then he collapses in the chair. And I was like, did he huh, just, like, maybe, maybe. Did he just beat off or something? Um, apparently, Some beat off references. Apparently in this film, they there was a lot of shit that they cut out. I guess there are two versions of the film. I must have seen the, the normal version. What did they cut? Well, probably because it was so, like, taboo back then. It definitely was. This is supposedly why the director, Michael Powell, got into, a, like, a lot of shit for it, because... There was nudity in it and stuff like that. The version did you see? Did you see nudity in it? I don't think so. It's weird because I know I, I must have seen an edited version because the main character, uh, Mark Lewis, besides working on film sets as a, um, what the hell was he? He was a focus puller, which is like showing where to zoom in. I mean, how the camera focuses on the f- on the film. So he's, He also but, worked for like this other dude. Right, right. I was going to get to that. What he does on set is that he'll he'll walk and see where a person is standing in frame on set and bring a, um, what are those things called, measuring tape, see how where they are and where the focus is. And yeah. on the side, for money, he takes um, nudie pinup shots. And, yeah, um, my God, that's so funny, too. When it this, There's a scene 
when a guy comes in to get like a shot or whatever, like he's a customer, and it's so fucking like he's so like nervous and embarrassed about just buying a picture of a naked woman, like not even like a movie, just a picture. And it's totally. It's totally like sitcom 60s kind of acting, the way the guy was acting when he looked at the nude photos and stuff. Because <laughs> he's like, he might as well should have been like Ralph Cramden saying, Hamana, 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 I mean, looking at it. I would love to take that guy and like show him like a hardcore porn film. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'd love to like clockwork orange him into a chair and like force him to watch some like woman having her ass like stuffed with like a giant dildo he probably wouldn't even know what to do he'd probably stand up doing the charleston and do some shit like that. his head would like <laughs> explode or something he's like what do you say how do you do the inside of my pants that's a lot of goo stop <laughs> laughing when i just tell my joke yeah, that's a very infectious laugh anyway what i was saying before the version that i saw was cut because <laughs> There's a pretty, uh, there's a pretty attractive blonde girl with an attitude who uh, does nude photos for him, right? Yeah. And there's a section before he ends up killing her later on in the film, but in that sequence, if you watch it, I was like, uh, she's like, uh, this is before like the end of the film, but and uh, he goes up to her and he goes, yeah, it's half very cold, very cold, and he's talking to her, and she's saying some bullshit, and I realize she has her clothing on. Then it cuts to a wide... It's like a close-up of her, and she has her top on. Then it cuts to a wide shot, and he's standing over her, and her breasts are exposed. But I, I think, like, if you first watch it, it doesn't register, because your eyes are going to pull to him. And then I Wait, realize... Uh, does it show the boob? Yeah, her breasts are out for, like, a split second. Like, they're out. Like, I guess she must have pulled the breasts even, out of her. Uh, I don't it even... It didn't register, right? Because, like... Yeah. Your eyes are focusing on that, on him. You know the part where he's about to kill My her. eyes always go to boobs. All right, well, I guess this one, they did it stealth because it took me, like, the third time to notice that because I was like, there's something wrong with this shot. Like, something's weird about it. And then I looked down because she's on the bottom half of the frame that her breasts are exposed. And apparently this is why the film got a lot of shit because there was nudity in it and the taboo subject, obviously. Because they work, the guy works at um his side job, like we said before, where he goes upstairs and takes nudie photos. He works like a, at a magazine shop. And at the magazine shop, like uh, Danny said before, they were selling like these nude it's photos. Like little shop of horror. <laughs> I'm just remembering of that guy though. <laughs> he just made oh, me laugh boobs. thinking about that guy looking through the titty shots and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess they might have shown close-up shots of those two because the whole walls are just. One of them had like a messed up face. Yeah, and, you... and uh, Mark would, was very. I would totally be into that girl. Yeah, but um, yeah, because he when he goes up there, he's taking photos. He's having like this little conversation with the girl. Um, I forget what the blonde chick's name was, but he's 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 chatting her up, and she's kind of an asshole. She's kind of very um. You know, all the, all the women in this movie are assholes. I have to say, like I seriously, mean, even that Helen, she's so annoying. Everybody's an asshole. Maybe that's just how people. I are. mean, Mark's an asshole too, but like he's the main character, so you could forgive it a little. But like these, yeah, that woman Helen is so annoying, and her mom. Oh my god. Yeah, I know her mom. Yeah, yeah. I wish they did more with those characters, honestly. But I just kind of, it kind of. Oh seemed... God! Helen. Every time Helen talks, I'm like, shut up! Like <laughs> wanting her to get killed. She. I figured it was gonna go that route. So what happened is Mark is uh, doing this job, and he's um, he's basically a peeping tom. I mean, it's not really. He he's basically he just his camera is never separated. He's always right, filming he's everything, always... whether it be murder or just like anything. But the, it doesn't really f seem like he's a peeping Tom. Do you know what I mean? Like, he only peeps once in the film that I can imagine. When he's looking through the window at uh, his neighbor Helen, or his uh, his tenant. Because he, he's the landlord of a building. And, he inherited uh, it after, after his father died. died. His weirdo dad. Um, he's only peeping through the window. That's it. And he's kind of looking creepily. He does it twice. He looks through a window. Uh, but the rest of the time, they want to la label it like he's peeping Tom because he has this camera and he's killing people. And doesn't seem that doesn't seem to mesh well with me. Do you know what I mean? Peeping yeah, Tom, it's the whole not point really is what like, you think of when you think of a peeping. Yeah, Tom. Yeah, I would figure peeping Tom is a guy who you don't. They don't want to be seen. They're watching you. They're like it's a whole voyeuristic kind of aspect to the film. Yeah. What What did you think about Mark Lewis as a character himself? He's pretty interesting. I mean, he's definitely a weirdo. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he acts the way his character. I can't imagine anybody ever carrying on a normal conversation with him because he's so incredibly strange. Like, his mannerisms, there's only two, maybe two or three parts where he's talking normal. And I think it's parts where he's talking about film. 
That he talks like a normal per What do you get? Fucking attacked by a devil or something? What was that? Oh boy. And we're back. So anyway, yes. So Danny and I uh, don't don't pay attention to that. So <laughs> Mark Lewis has a character. He's very strange, and I think that he's um he's a bit too weird for anybody to interact with. Do you think in the 1960s, like he he was a because uh, him and Norman Bates, right? He would say, well, Norman Bates was way weirder. Like as far as no, like I, I would be creeped out by this weird. guy. They're both weirdos. I think they're Yeah, but I mean, weird. who would you feel more comfortable? Well, I think Mark is much more weirder than Norman Bates. I'm well, Mark is weirder in, like, certain ways, but Norman Bates, like, he's a guy I would never want to be alone with for a second. Well, you think he would molest you or something? He's, like, a, he's, like, I don't know. He's not even capable of, like, he's, like, fucking crazy. I mean, so is Mark, <laughs> but he's more crazy. Yeah, but don't you think the speech patterns and the weird mannerisms of Mark is, like, much weirder than Norman Bates? Yeah, but it's more, like, cute in a weird way, you know what I'm saying? Alright, man, I don't know. He's more lovable. Norman Bates is just, like, like creepy. I, I think the opposite, but, um... Creepier. So, um, but I think, as a character, what do you think he... How, how he is as a villain, though, like... He's, uh... He's definitely he's, interesting, though. He's definitely interesting, and, like, you know, he's... It's so weird because this is a totally different type of movie than any movie I've ever really seen. I've never really seen the classics. I've seen like a few Alfred Hitchcock movies growing up, but most of the movies I watch are like, you know, like fucking gory and all that kind of stuff. And then this is like so soft to what I watch. Yeah, it is. A, it's a completely different palette compared to other films that we've been. Any of the ones that we reviewed. This but is, I kind of like it. I kind of want to get into more movies like it's this. A, it's an interesting. A moment of history, I guess, in film. Like, what do you think made people batshit crazy about getting the director? People were, like, so fucking crazy in the 50s. Like, you know, like, anything, a boob, would, like, make people freak out. Like, even just kissing is, like, taboo. Why do you think... But, I mean, it's... And then all our parents did fucking crazy drugs, and now in the we're late 60s, so fucked right. up. I, I mean, it... Because it seems like for the world, when it evolved, there was all, like, sexual craziness going on in the Roman times and the times after it. And then it seemed a lot of religious stuff, you know, got in the way. You think that's what's what's going on? That yeah, they, it's they got like, people so I don't know. Even still, in America, it's so oh, funny. Definitely. Like all the movies that we have, yet like there's congressional meetings because Janet Jackson showed her nipple at halftime. I know. God forbid you see a nipple like something that someone. I mean, has. we only all sucked nipples growing up, but like, uh oh, let's have a congressional meeting. I still never got over that. I remember watching C-SPAN and seeing the congressional meetings and like just not getting it but yet it's okay to have like a condom commercial like oh, yeah. a vibrating condom i don't get that the funny thing that people don't know about is c-span the c for c-span means cock so i mean they, don't, they yeah, shouldn't uh, even feel bad about months, it months depending on who's watching that's it. true that's true um but peeping tom i think what, what about the the surrounding cast uh yeah i mean they're all interesting but i swear to god that helen made me crazy <laughs> she you know she reminded me of she she's reminded me so of... she's so fucking prying she has a weird face too, right? She knows she. She's rem so, she reminds me of a ventriloquist doll. Oh yeah, you're right. You know what else she looks? She reminds me of uh, who's that? That that broad with the blonde hair, the act, Gwyneth Paltrow. She looked like Gwyneth her Paltrow. Some, just a little bit. I mean, yeah. I'd bank Gwyneth Paltrow, not this girl, but she kind of reminded me here for some reason, like some kind of prim girl, like she, always invading somebody's space and shit like she that. She has no like sense of space or boundaries. Like she's that. really into the Mark character, and she lives with her mother, who's blind, which I thought was a pretty cool. Um, plot thing with the mother being blind and you know picking up on Mark's weirdness. Yeah. Although they don't, re they do it once. You know, they they really get, but they don't really get into it any more than that. It kind of seems like the film was going somewhere very interesting, but then it decided to be like, oh look, it's an hour and fifteen into the movie, let's end this already. Although the yeah. movie's like an hour and forty minutes long, right? Now, yeah, yeah, uh, hundred and one minutes. Hundred. Oh, okay, so it's even shorter than that. But um, oh no, it's about the same uh, time. For, an hour and 41 minutes. Yeah, so it's about the right time. Uh, but it seems like they could have gone straight up to two hours and got a little bit more out of it, and I wouldn't have Yeah, they could have done more with the mom. Like, the movie but wasn't boring at all. I don't think at all. Yeah, it wasn't boring. I enjoyed every second of it. The Helen character, though, she's just so prying. Like, he's showing... She's insisting that she wants to see his videos, so he's showing him videos of him... Because he, he's, like, fucked up as a child. His dad was yeah. a psychologist and used to do, like, fear experiments on him. His father basically him. made him a guinea pig. 
his dad actually became Scarecrow from the Batman. Yeah, right. He wrote a book, you know, and funny enough, the father in the film was played by the director, William Powell. So that's Oh, amazing. really? Okay. Yeah. So uh, what happened is his father was a, a um, like you said, a psychologist or phys- was a psychologist? Was it something Psych- else? Uh, experiment. Psychoanalyst or something like that. And he wrote a book about fears and he used his son as a test. Uh, on these like kind of things, so he would, lizards on him. He would and, shine a light on him while he was asleep to wake him up in the middle of the night. Throw lizards on him, and like, and then you find out later in the film he actually like rigged all the apartments in the building for like sounds and shit. Right, so, so it's a whole bunch of weird shit going on there. So while, while Mark is showing this footage, it's almost like he's revealing a piece of himself to um, Helen, and Helen's like for some reason Helen's really into him. I guess because he doesn't pay attention to anybody. She just asks so many questions. She's like a little prying kid. She's just like, Mark, what is this? Mark, what, Mark, he's not mad. Why is he doing that? What is this? What is that? Like nonstop. I just want to be like, shut up. I guess they couldn't. They didn't know subtlety back then because I guess a lot of the film. Like I, I think it's cool with the way they did it that they, that they um they revealed this part of his psyche. So early into the film, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because other films, like, they'll say it in exposition. Like, they'll just have somebody say it at the end. Like, a, a whole bunch of shit will happen. And then a de- detective will be like, he was raised up by his father. And his father used to beat him and make him fuck horses. And then I'll be like, <laughs> like, what? That's how you explain what happened to the guys? Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? So in this, like, you get to see it in snippets. You don't necessarily see it straight up, what happened. Although you get from what you do see, it's more visual. So, I mean... I, I like the way they handle it. Helen is a bit annoying. I, I mean, I don't know what Mark yeah. would see into her, besides that delicious piece of cake that she brought up from the house. Oh man, that should look good. And um, <laughs> that's because I'm a fat fuck. You know what? It's probably gone bad at this point, though. <laughs> Maybe right. But that <laughs> cake is still there in that building from all this time. It's like just totally rotted. That There's shit is like alive by there. now. Um, yeah, I mean, and then her mother is this. Uh, she looks like an old crane. Or old crone, excuse me, Vivian, who's like this blind woman, and you know, at first you thought you just human she... Krang, like from Ninja Turtles. Well, that too, she kind of looks like her. But um, she's she's this blind woman, and when I first saw it, I thought she was just a bad actor. Like she was... I didn't realize she was blind. Until right, I thought what? she was an over actor. Like she was uh, she was one of those thespians that looks off to somewhere else when they're talking. I was like, this is a bitch a bad actor. She's blind, <laughs> but she has a very cool scene with Mark later on when she confronts him. She goes into his dark room where he processes the footage of all the people that he's killed. And um, it's an interesting. How, how does he kill him? How does he kill him? Oh, go ahead. He uh, he has a tripod in his pants. It, it's very Clockwork Orange, actually. He, he removes it. the tip of the tripod, and it's like a, a knife. Yeah, he pulls off the one of the legs of the tripod, and it reveals there's a there's a sliver of a knife in there or a spear, right? So yeah, like a spear. So he you... could be he could point it out, still be filming, and stab them at the same time. And one of the really cool reveals towards the end of the film is when he actually shows what that what that um, light was at the beginning of the film, is that it's there's a mirror that's attached to the camera, while yeah. it films you and you see your face as you die. And I'm like, that's fucking. Aw-. I mean, to me, I think that was pretty. <laughs> it's gonna sound like a very bold statement. But I think it's pretty revolutionary to have a killer do something like that in a film, this old. I'm sure it's been written yeah. about, and you know, I'm sure there was a lot of writings back then that had very cool things. But for a movie, I never. I wouldn't expect it because this film is so old. Like, I think I think this seriously, this movie kind of like makes me want to get into like old movies. Yeah, it's a really cool fucking movie. I mean, it's I wanna I wanna like break out the Hitchcock. I haven't seen any of them since being a little kid, and I just wanna like watch them all over again. This so. was this was on a list that I saw on IMD. Well, after I saw it, I I was looking up on the IMDb page. There was a guy that has a list called 305 movies that I think. No, not the strangers. Where was it? Well, anyway, it was on an IMDb list about, like, the top movies you have to watch before you die. And yeah. every movie in that list was, like, really good, or I've heard being really good, so I'm going to have to, like, I'll probably drop that in, like, when we post this episode up. Yeah, like, yeah, get, get me that list. But this see. film is really good, like, for, it's very stylistic. There's another sequence where Mark is um, meeting up with an extra from the film. It's this uh, redhead girl, right? And she's yeah. working on set, and he's promising her to shoot like a little thing with her because he wants oh, to be a director. Oh, she's so annoying too. Jesus, he's trying cool. to film her, and she's fucking dancing around and just like so obnoxious. I, I really liked that scene. I really liked that. I thought it was very cool because it felt like a '60s film. Like it felt like one of those cool, trippy sequences. Because yeah, the woman is, it felt like it was gonna break into a musical, like fucking like West Side Story for some reason. 
Because but the, like, girl... the whole time she's doing it, I'm just picturing myself being. <laughs> you were waiting for him to kill her. I'm just like, please, like, stab stop it, dancing so you can just die already. Yeah, I, I thought it was pretty neat because she's Dude, doing this way whole too little... peppy. She's getting herself <laughs> all ready for the shoot, so she starts dancing around the set, and then you know he's he's just waiting and he's getting anno visibly annoyed and stuff like that. And the and the cops like there's there are two things that I wish they like really got into more. They could have made this film way more intense, but it, it is good for what it is. Um, is the police investigation and stuff like that because the police are kind of bumbling kind of idiots in this film yeah um, they really don't play a big role they really don't I figured they would but the, you know like well, all you those know what? like the probably cop films came later like you know no, like maybe cops... this, this isn't the breakthrough cop type of film I think this is, the, this is the film that was the opposite of the instead of dealing with the police they just dealt with the murderer straight on and going through his kind of because there's plenty of police films, detective films from the 50s that you. And there's so see. many movies that do what this movie did, but like so shitty. I I'm not even gonna bother naming them, but we've reviewed them. Oh, definitely. But this, <laughs> I, I wish they had done more with the mother, and I wish they had done more with the cops. Not not so much the cops where you see them 24/7 in the film, but almost catching them. You know, kind of like how Dexter the show was. Well, it used to be good. Yeah. Um, it is. I'm not even gonna into that. But uh, it's, a, it's a really good film, and I, I like the color scheme of it. I like the shots are really good. I love the... I wonder if it was filmed in black and white, and they went in... I wonder, because when he plays back his movies, they're in black and white. So I saw the Criteria Criterion uh, Collection well, version. Wait, when did uh, Wizard of Oz come out? Because that was the first color film, I think. Isn't it? I have no idea. Let me look it up really quick. Yeah, Talk you, about something. Are you a friend of Dorothy? Is that how it is? You know what yeah, means? me and Dorothy and Toto, we have threesomes. No, like that's, a, that's actually a, a, a reference to... Wait, Wizard of Oz came out in 1939, so... Yeah. So color exists. I don't even think it was colored until, <laughs> like, in the 60s on television, I think. But, but uh, oh, yeah, but, I mean, the movie itself was colored. Ah, who knows. So, um, uh, your final thoughts about this film? Uh, it's really good. You should see it. <laughs> I mean, it does... Yeah, I know there's, there's I, not much My, my rating is, I'm going to give it... Uh, for what it is, I will give it a ten out of ten. Yeah. I mean, as like the type of thing I'm into, I wouldn't. Right. Maybe I'll give it the type of thing I'm into. I'll give it like a. No, I'll give it the, for what it is. Yeah, yeah. It's ten out of ten. Um, uh, killing this annoying dancing redheaded bitch <laughs> with a spear and making her look at her own face as she does. I'll give it a ten out of ten. Uh, blonde nude models tits. Magically appearing before she gets <laughs> killed when the killer shows up in silhouette. Um, so with that, what what is the next film? It is Infestation. Very good, Infestation from two thousand eight, two thousand nine, I think. From two thousand nine. Uh, uh, so Danny, what is the final word? Dispatched. <laughs>